That's better. <laughs> right, we've cut it out. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Difficult, these guys. How are you doing? Not too bad. My cactus is a bit deflated, so <laughs> I feel very underdressed. <laughs> so let's quickly let's see if we can get Jack in here as well. Sometimes yeah. it works or, or, or not. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. How, how have you been, mate? Uh, you you barbecue? Here yeah, we're on. There we go. We have three. Barry, how's it going? Hello, mate. You alright? Yeah, not too bad, guys. I was just saying, I feel very underdressed. <laughs> This is so, the, only, the only entertainment we get every week, so we, we need to go <laughs> You guys have sunshine as well. I'm a bit grey here, but it's all right. It's dry. It's dry for now. So, so just quickly then, this is Barry from Provenance Butcher. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about the butcher and, and, and how you work with the butcher. Yeah, I've been with the guys for nearly two years now. I um, was a chef for around 13 years and then went into the butcher game, wanted to learn something new. And learn it properly, especially. That's why I went to the guys at Providence, because what they were doing was great. So, and what they're still doing is great. Um, so, yeah, I joined them two years ago as a butcher in their Chelsea store. And we were, I was working away in there. Um, and recently now, I've just jumped on as a chef for them, um, creating some new stuff, some new marinades, some new boxes, some new specials for the, for the case and for online. Because they've just bought a, a barbecue range, haven't they, Barry? Like a yeah. New, um, load of new products. I think I saw the tandoori lamb cutlets. Tandoori cutlets, yeah. They look amazing. They're spot on. Yeah, we've just kind of, the past couple of weeks, we've been working hard on some lot of new products. Yeah, things like the cutlets or just some things like a basic chicken burger. Just something that's good for the barbecue, just really quick. Midweek stuff as well. It's, um, it's fairly reasonably priced as well, which I quite like. Um, I just say, like, people want to barbecue all the time, but sometimes they think, oh, I've got yeah. to spend a lot of money to do a barbecue. But absolutely, yeah, you, you've kind of sort of misspelled that, haven't you, by doing this, this range. So Fully, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We want everyone to, midweek, yeah. you want to concentrate, you want to have a good dinner just on a Wednesday night, just as much as you do on the weekend, you know what I mean? You want to do something good all the time. Okay, so, so, so Cinco de Mayo then, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Jack and I, we figured out it means the 5th of May. 5th of May. <laughs> 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 we got that part. <laughs> it's a bit of a celebration and, and, and well, I've been doing it for many years now I do it the Coach Anita Pibble smoked pork nice, nice. this year we did the uh, Taco Al Pastor and then nice. um, we're, we're going to do a bit of a carne asada which is um, yeah so I've got it here beautiful bavette mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah it's, it's we wanted to use something that was a bit kind of underappreciated I suppose you know it cuts like your bavette or your anglais so we took a bavette just because we wanted to champion the kind of smaller ingredients and the kind of lesser known pieces. And, um, you know, ribeyes are great. You can't go wrong with a big bone in ribeye. It's a fantastic kind of barbecue. But at the same time, take a bavette. It's, it's bloody brilliant. It's great, reasonably priced, incredible flavor, really easy to cook because it's a nice flat piece. But I got a piece as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll get it on. So what we did with that was we wanted to go Mexican flavors. We work with Mex Grocer as well. So I got some nice ancho chilies from, from the guys at Mex Grocer. I put that in there. So there's ancho chili, there's garlic powder, there's some smoked paprika. Um, and yeah, just th that's all it really needs. And you're still championing the, the, the piece of meat, which is the main thing. Yeah, the buffet for me is, uh, has been one of my big discoveries since doing the Instagram. Sort of thing. I, I would have ne never known, never heard of it, never came across it, and yeah. it's uh, it's now one of my favourite steaks. Like uh, for me, Absolutely. it's been the bivet, mate. It's a beautiful cut, you know. Absolutely. And tell us, tell us a little bit about how to cook it. What's the best way to cook one of these? So yeah, it's 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 one of those cuts that you want to cook quite quickly. You want to keep under medium. You want to keep it to the rare to the medium rare, um, just because of the the muscles in there you want to break down some of that fat but you don't want to cook it too much because it will go chewy it's one of those things so if it's for a well done you don't want to go anywhere near it it's something you can kind of slow cook for hours on end and it'll be nice in that way as well it'll shred but it's better just as a nice quick steak really good just fast high heat yeah perfect for it i think we might do that we might try the uh the barbecue on one of our uh, fancy Char rolls in. How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. I got one on here myself. I'm not going to uh -huh. mess around with the camera too much though, because I've got it on a precarious stand, so it might go flying. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we got one cooking away. Ah, so 
So cooking time, then cooking technique and cooking times for the for the unit that comes in the fries and that's in the uh, uh, secret barbecue box. Yeah, so most of the time it's this nice flat steak. It's, sometimes you can get a bavet, it can be a bit thicker. So it will take, you gotta, you gotta use your own judgment on that. So you're looking at it's something that is that kind of thickness. You're only talking about three, three minutes either side is probably more than enough. If it's a bit thicker, you are gonna like, you know, your usual techniques of your feeling, your hand, and things like this for your nice medium rares. Um, but it's only gonna take, um, yeah, probably six, seven minutes in total. Probes are great. I love probes. I've, I've worked in professional kitchens for years, but you know what's going on with a probe. Can't mess up. Jack, Jack loves a bit of a probe every now and yeah, then. Yeah, absolutely. You can't go wrong with it. So what you're going to do is, if you want a nice medium rare, take it to about 50, 52 degrees, take it off, leave it rest. It's going to climb by about five degrees when it's resting. Okay, okay. All right. Barry, Barry settle an argument between me and, me and Hills. When, <laughs> when you rest your meat, do you yeah. cover it or do you leave it uncovered? I don't personally because I like it. I, I don't mind the temperature of my food when I cut when I eat it. My wife, on the other hand, she gives that to me all the time. She's like, it's not it's not piping hot, so she likes it in a warm place. Just to settle disputes, it depends on on who I'm cooking for. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's interesting. You know, I've always sort of wondered. You know, uh, I mean, either a sort of tented foil with a couple of holes in it, but yeah. preferably with a bit of a cloth. I, I, I yeah. Been, where you're resting it? If you're resting it somewhere warm, exactly. or you're if you're if you're in a kitchen and it's warm and it's one of those things, yeah, I, I would cover it. And especially bigger pieces of meat. You know, if you're doing a big, massive coat of buff or something like that, I think it'd be it's gonna. I like to leave that rest for a long time, at least half the cooking time. Okay. Whiskey Wings is asking, are you from Cork? Where are you from in Ireland? <laughs> I'm from Tipperary, the sunny southeast. Okay, I think that, that sounds much cooler than Cork, actually, doesn't it? <laughs> it's got a nice much ring to it. Got a nice ring. So don't, don't worry about whiskey wings. He's from Wales. That's uh, another another thing. <laughs> that's another. Yeah, you don't want to get those um, accents all mixed up. We got an Aussie and an Irish. That's enough to decide for today, I think, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We got an Aussie, an Irishman, and an Englishman. All we need is a punchline. <laughs> How about I'm sure we all walked into a bar at one stage, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, well, um, I've got a bit of um. I've got a bit of taco asp al pastor going on here. This is That's looking pretty amazing. You're using some of our pork shoulder, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sensational, mate. Let, let, yeah. let me show you, Barry. Let me show you what we're working with. Awesome. Let me move in. Wow. You got your classic pineapple on either end. Oh, yeah. Nice. Bloody hell. How many are you feeding there? Well, there's, there's only five of us around today, but I, I love a bit of leftover barbecue. Can be, yeah, especially pork. So versatile, you can put it in like you can make burritos of it. Or bloody hell, yeah. got a, a house full. Hey, where's, where's my invite? <laughs> There'll be too many cooks around the one barbecue. I think if you two boys yeah. were together. <laughs> so yeah, Pro Providence Butcher then. They're, yeah. they're, they're a London-based busher. Um, uh, how long have you been there? What's, what's your connection with them? So I've been there um, just two years. Um, in that time, the guys have grown from strength to strength. When I started, they just opened their little Venice store. Um, so they had Notting Hill originally. Um, and then from Notting Hill, they went on to Sloan Square in Chelsea. Um, and then after that, they took on Little Venice. And then we, they went to... There was uh, uh, Queen's Park was after that. Queen's Park and now South Kensington just opened recently. So South right. Ken is a great little spot. Actually, it seems like it's on a great little street. Um, going from strength to strength. They're only open just over a month or so and it's been really, really good. Nice, nice. And and what's your role there? You do recipe development? How does, how does it work? Yeah, it's kind of just because it's a brand new role. Um, only in the past couple of months that that's kind of happened. Um, kind of started off as we were looking to go into the world of like pies and some different kind of special kits and things like this. Um, and it's kind of evolved into more of like a development chef kind of role. Um, creating some great products from raw, but also some cooked products and ready to eat products at home. So I've got some things like just mac and cheese and some a good coleslaw, just some nice basic ingredients to go with your 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 steaks or whatever it is you're getting for your barbecue bits. That's a that's a really good idea because obviously like what Hillary's doing, he's got people around, he's 
yeah. it's really, you know, you've only got one barbecue, a lot of people, not yeah. like us, we've got, you know, too many. But yeah, people struggle with the side dishes, don't they? So you do the meat. But then it's kind of a lesser no, it's a lesser thought about thing, isn't it? Everyone thinks of the yeah, main thing, yeah. the main kind of the main protein or whatever. But yeah, like we're we're trying to cater for everyone and try and have a bit of everything for people to kind of to to fill their basket with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we had your um, belted Galloway beef ribs. Uh, oh yeah, it won the steak clubs. Oh, last Christmas. Yeah. Oh. Unbelievable. Jeez. Unbelievable. My wife still talks about it now. She's like, when are you going to get another one of them? <laughs> like, yeah. We, yeah. We that. That was but that's the one good thing. The guys have worked, you know, really hard over the past couple of years just to build up a good relationship with some great suppliers that really care about where the meat is coming from. And, and that's kind of, you know, once you get that thing right, that's all you need to do. All we do is we prepare it well and we sell it. And, you know, but, you know, all the work is done with, with these guys. They know what they're doing. And, and the guys have gone to all the trouble to find those, those really good suppliers. But that's what we love to champion on on yeah. Susan's that is like we have a laugh, we dress up, and yeah, know, of course. Our whole ethos is we love to have people who care about their meat, who know yeah. where it come where it's come from, and the farmers mm-hmm. actually care about raising and you know animal husbandry in general. Yeah. So yeah, Providence Bridge absolutely is, uh, you know, doing it right in my book. Very much so. Very much so. So, if you, so from your point of view, Barry, then you're you're, you're a cook, and cl- quite clearly you you've got a bit of a barbecue going on in your backyard there. <laughs> yeah, I do indeed. And I got some sunshine, finally. And you got some sunshine there. Well, bu- bu- barbecue lads and Jack's meat shack. That's what we aim to do. Bring sunshine to everybody, mate. Uh, tick. So, um, Done. Love it. <laughs> so, um, what, 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 what do you like to cook on the barbecue? And, 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 and you know, what, what's one of your favourite cuts or favourite things to cook on the barbecue? I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of pork, personally. Um, I love pork. I'd eat it all day long. Um, so I do like that kind of thing. Yeah, I like that low and slow, falling apart. I'm a sucker for pork ribs. You can't beat pork ribs. Yeah. I, I, like, I do like the lesser known cuts. I like the kind of cheaper cuts. I love a good ribeye. I love a good bone-in ribeye or a nice piece of sirloin. But you just can't beat the flavor you get from a, from a, you know, a pork collar or something. Like a nice pork collar steaks for me are incredible. Oh, I love, love something love that. Pork holiday. They're so good. Pork, pork ribeye or a, a, a like a T-bone, yeah. a big, thick pork chop. Yeah. With the, Unbelievable. You know, the, oh, with a tenderloin left on it. Yeah, yeah. unreal, unreal. Yeah. And then things like, I love anglais, so hanger steak. I love, I really like that, that richness it has in there. You know, it's just, yeah, can't beat it. Nice, nice, nice. All right, well, and, and is there any sort of preferred barbecue techniques or anything? Any, any, any barbecue tips that a, a, a chef, chef butcher would like to give out to everybody? I mean, I mean, I think most people, you know, where you can, cooking over fire is, is amazing. It's hard. It's technical. You've got to be very careful. But cooking over fire just gives that little, especially with, with things like beef, it, gives, it brings that flavor to the next level for me. Um, getting that little bit of a char outside it and things like that, it really, really makes a massive difference. So where you can, cooking on fire, cooking over wood, things like that really make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, we've got this n- nice barbecue here, and it's yeah. a gas, right? Yeah. So, here we've got smoking chips that can give it a nice smoke around the... Uh, nice. Uh, uh, and and yeah. for the barbecue smoking, like, there's so many different techniques and ways to do it now. And Absolutely. Yeah, very much so. There's, I mean, there's bits of kit coming out week after week these days, isn't there? There is some incredible pieces of kit out there. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I do like smoking. I think smoking is great. You've got to be careful with it, obviously. Some people like to go a bit too heavy with it, but yeah, it's, it's, it is a great thing. Nice, nice. All right, well, nothing, nothing better than spending the whole day in the garden, beer in hand. <laughs> For sure. Grill. You know, so at the end of it, something like pork ribs that will fall apart yeah. or brisket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah briskets. Briskets incredible. If you get a nice fatty brisket, Amazing. it's all about that fat for me. You know, people do forget the fat is flavor. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. You know, we get this um, British beef sometimes isn't always as fatty as some of the American, like, grain Yeah. Beef. Like, you know, some yeah, of our absolutely. beef is coming through now is, is amazing, like, We've had some amazing beef, and we heals from like Longcroft and Old Stoddard's beef. You know the Belted yeah. Galloway yeah. you gave us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah. British beef, hands down, the in the world. And, and, and we got and, we got some fantastic ex dairy cows at the moment as well. They, these yeah. like the flavour yeah. from those guys is insane, and they've got obviously they've lived a lot longer. They get a bit yeah. more fat. 
I saw Strew and Cook one, didn't he? On his, yeah, on his, uh, yeah, he cooked the other day. It's incredible. Mate, I'd actually amazing. put some of some of my new bone marrow butter on there. I just Ooh. made up a nice recipe for some uh, some bone marrow butter, where it's just some, it's half bone marrow, half butter, some garlic, some parsley. Stick that in a steak. It's really, really good. Wow. Yeah. Can't beat that. There we go. Here's another episode right there, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, yeah. I do. That's probably been my number one discovery out of the whole Instagram experience is um, the ex dairy beef. You know? yeah, 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 unbelievable, insane. You know, unbelievable. Use old stuff like that. You know, there's yeah. lithium, but there's the British stuff that just you know it's yeah, off the screen. Yeah, it really is. It really, like the Spanish stuff is immense. We've got Spanish stuff, incredible, really big, big flavor. Um, but the British stuff sometimes is just as incredible. If you get the right one, it's, it can be it can be incredible. Really, really good. Okay, well, we've got a we've, we've just got a few minutes left. Then, then, then Barry. So yeah, we should first thing we should do, Jack, is um we have a winner for the uh, uh, Providence uh, Cinco de Mayo box, which will be delivered next week. Uh, most people will be celebrating awesome. next week or, 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 or doing this. Cinco Drinco de Mayo event. Yeah, so we've made the box available for for Wednesday for Cinco de Mayo, and it's also available next weekend. Also, winner of that, then Jack. Should should we uh, pack it up here? (laughs) 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 Right one this time. It's days underscore smoking underscore barbecue. Days underscore boom. Congratulations. Boom. You're in for a treat, days underscore uh, smoking barbecue. So, you know, well, well done. And we'll get the details over to you, Barry. And, and, and so you can get Perfect. That yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they'll enjoy like, it. As much as we did. So, well, on, on that note, any sort of last notes from, from uh, Providence Butcher then? Just give us a quick uh, thank you. Just uh, just telling everyone to get outside and enjoy the, hopefully we'll get a bit of sunshine and, and get barbecuing over the summer. Yeah. Right. We're with you on that. In, in, any words of wisdom then, Jack? I think Barry's hit the nail on the head. Get outside, grill as much as you can. Doesn't have to be expensive. Most no, places now no. do some really Plenty reasonable of cuts of meat that you can cook on a weeknight nice and fast and enjoy yeah. an amazing yeah. dinner. So, yeah, get outside, grill. Nice. And on that note, we'll get the uh, studio audience to say a farewell. Studio audience, say thank you, Barry. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> Got my own fan club here. Thanks, Barry. Cheers, guys. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.